The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Welcome to the offices of Duke and Duke. We're back here in Philadelphia, 100 South Broad Street. We'll start today like we usually do with the German DAX. You can see it's running in a different direction than we have here in the United States. Evidently, the fundamentals must be a little different. And the next one we're going to take a look at, of course, will be the FTSE. And then we'll get on to what we uh, usually start the day with is uh, something that might be interesting today. And that's what we're going to do. Where is the FTSE chart? They're hiding. There it is. Hold on. Same thing here in the FTSE. It's backed off a little bit, too. So whether it means something or not, I get two emails a day. It seems like where is the top of the market? Folks, I don't know and I don't care. Uh, I basically, you know, I try to look at the patterns, and that's really what I'm trying to do. And here, here's I'm going to post to you what I think is, <laughs> is very, it's very, very important because uh, you know it, it's. Uh, let's just get this up here to see it because we talked about this uh, quite a bit, and I want to be able to. Uh, Get it up here. I hope this is it. Please be it. This is it. Yes. Here's yesterday, folks, boys and girls. Very, very important here. And I'll give you my two cents worth as we go through. This was the chart of Apple. We had a beautiful three drive to a top pattern over the past several days. It's a four-hour chart. So this goes back over several weeks. We were sitting right at the 1.618 expansion there at 333. And I said to sell it at 332.90. And then yesterday when we were on, I said if it sees three, if it sees <laughs> if it sees 334, you're wrong. But let me let me just show you what happened after 334. You see this big move like this? Okay, let's move on and we'll just show you. And then I'll tell you a little interesting story about Mark Douglas. Okay, here is now we're going to take a look at what happened after Apple broke that 1.618. You see how it moved down just a little bit, moved down to about 329. And you and then we you know we sell it at three thirty two seventy. The reason why I said if it gets above that, <laughs> man, you you you're you're dealing with the you're you're dealing with someone that's not playing with all the cards. I mean, this is one of the most powerful signals that you can get, and that's that breaking above or below that one point six one eight level on the upside. And if it goes on the downside, you'll break it. I mean, it's just it's just an incredible a, a pattern. Now, hold on, someone's calling in. Apple's at three forty eight. Yeah, it's up a little bit. Yeah, it's where is it at now? I have yeah, three, there it is. You know, three forty eight twenty. Yeah, we're up here, and I'll, I'll show you Amazon in just a minute here. But the reason why I bring this up to you is that when Mark Douglas was writing the book here, Trading in the Zone, uh, one of the things that I would show him, I said, look, Mark, I said, look look what happens here when it breaks above the 1.618 expansion. He says, well, why don't you use that as a buy signal? And I said, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't like to chase markets like that. He said, but, but Larry, he said, look, he said, look how powerful it is. You got the trend going up, but, you know, everything's going in your favor. Well, I went through this conversation yesterday morning. With uh, with John Jameson, and uh, John says, "Well, you know, why don't you just buy, buy, put a uh, put a call uh, uh, a call butterfly on?" And he said, "It'll give you six or seven to one odds on this." And I said, "I don't know what that means." And so he showed me how to. I don't still don't understand what he did. He sold something and bought something. Uh, he bought he yeah, bought two and sold one. In other words, you got some money back for the one that you sold. When you sell an option, you get money back, and then when you buy it, you have to pay it off. But it uh, this thing took off like a rocket. I mean, it made. Uh, the risk on that trade he was doing was like three hundred and three hundred and twenty dollars, and it made like fifteen hundred in, in at the end of the day. I mean, I was blown away. So I have to start looking at options. He showed me one that he's that we were looking at yesterday, also that was really interesting, and that was in uh, where is it? Uh, bear with me, boys and girls. I hope I'll get it up here. Uh, I think it is. There it is. This is Amazon. Let's get it up here. We'll be able to see the same thing here. 
You notice, you see the 1.618 up there. The market went from 1.618 to drop from 25.25. It dropped all the way down to 23.75, and then bada bing, bada boom. Look what yes, look what happened yesterday when it cleared that 1.618 at 25.25. The thing ran a hundred dollars. Now, this stock sells for $2,600, let's say $2,500 yesterday. Okay, if you got $2,500, you do 100 shares, you're looking at a lot of money, boys and girls. So, you know, it's, it's a quarter of a million bucks. And so how do you trade a thing with a quarter of a million bucks? Well, John said, well, look, look, you do an option. So you went and looked at the option chain, and the same thing was true with Amazon as Apple. These were breaking out to the upside. But the trouble was the uh, Amazon, by the time we had looked he had looked at the Amazon, the, uh, the the market had moved, you know, like, uh, you know, eight or nine dollars and eight or nine dollars when you do an option is quite a bit. So the two two things you got to remember, boys and girls, this is really important. You know, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you don't lose. And for heaven's sakes, when something goes, if you're following these markets and these patterns work a lot of the time, they don't work all the time. But when you go beyond one point six one eight, that is a flashing light. I mean, and then if you're really aggressive and you want to do that, then that's fine. Well, the story continues on uh, after about, oh, it must have been about a month you know, we were watching these just to see what happened, and uh, there were like ten in a row that worked on the 1.618. And market market had uh, uh, yeah, we were looking at commodities, but market done those, and they were making pretty good money. And so what did I do? I did the next three on 1.618, and all three of them that was the reversal spot. In other words, it went a little above the 1.618 and immediately reversed, and that was it. I said, Mark, I said I can't do it. I said it just upsets my, you know, my. Uh, the way I the way I like to trade, and he said, you know, you're absolutely right. He said, you don't have to do those. He said, some people can do them. He said, but uh, he said, you're just not one of those. You just do what you do. He said, you're fine. He said, you're going to be okay. And I said, yeah, I know I will be. But watch 1.618, folks. I mean, that thing is when it gets above that, boy, you know, <laughs> it's really, really something. That's the main thing. By the way, we will have Stan Harley as our guest today, and tomorrow we will have uh, uh, Bill Chapman of Trend Reaction. Friday, I don't think I'm going to be here. I have something that I that I really wanted to do, and I need a day off, so I am going to take uh, Friday off, and uh, that's what I'd like to do. Actually, well, we'll move on to the next one here, and uh, we'll get this up and take a look at it. If you remember, the last time Stan was on, he gave us this chart, and I'm just going to see if he still, still thinks this is correct. This was the Dow Jones yearly, and you know, see that this was going back to the Revolutionary War. You can see all the big moves. You know what's really interesting, folks, as you look at this, look at the right side there where 1987 is. 19, you don't even see the crash. I mean, <laughs> that's how minor the crash was when you look at it long term. So who knows? You know, folks, people have asked. Uh, in fact, Tudor Jones was on this morning on uh, on Bloomberg for just a second. And, uh, well, he was on for about oh, maybe a minute. And, he, and it, he was laughing. He said, you know, I don't know where it's going. He said, you see crazy stuff happening. That look, look at Chesapeake Energy. You know, the thing was selling for almost nothing the other day. And it got up. To eighty-four dollars, and it's in, and it files bankruptcy. Are you kidding me, boy? These things are going nuts out here. So just be careful. Anyway, the one that we want to watch today is the Amazon because that you know we'll take a look at that because I I have to wait the first hour of trading if it's below the open in the first hour. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted a chart of the NASDAQ because we're seeing that same pattern that we've seen in Amazon. Amazon's on the daily. This is an hourly chart on the NASDAQ, and as you can see, we're making a three-drive to a top pattern, and again, that 1.618 number has popped up. Uh, that came in at about uh, 1048, I believe. Yeah, 10,048. Gosh, can I say, but say that? 10,048, that's twice what it was. In 2000, when we had the big bubble where we dropped down to, uh, wow, dropped 85%. Well, that could probably never happen. Well, anyway, that's what we're watching here. So that's the number we're watching, 1048. Uh, looks like we backed off a little bit to 1032 so far. Uh, again, if you get above that 1048 now, you know, you've done something wrong, and you certainly don't want to stand in front of that freight train because that's basically, you know, you're looking at Microsoft and, well, all the big ones, that's for sure. We'll have Stan Harley at the break here of 877-927-66. Uh, four, eight. Yes, uh, they're saying is anything can happen, and it usually does. That's uh, what you have to be afraid of. It's very, very interesting. Okay, we've got Amazon at 2638 pre-market. That's the number that we're looking at, 2638. Uh, it's going to open. Now, the, the key there is if you're going to take a shot at Amazon, and I would only do it with an option strategy, is to, you know, to see what's going to happen in the first uh, half hour. Because if we're below 2838, 2638, that first half hour, that tells you that the opening price could be kicking in, and the opening price doesn't work all the time. It works about 65% of the time. What we're trying to do is put the odds in our favor. So that's what I would be looking at is something like that. Now, you know, if this is this is not for the faint of heart, folks. If you're trading this, and I don't I don't trade stocks, but the patterns are the same. It doesn't make any difference. So we'll we'll follow through with this tomorrow for sure because we won't be able to see. Well, it'll open here, at, uh, but Stan will be our guest and we'll be asking him questions, so it won't make too much difference. Let's move on to a couple things that uh, have worked, you know, relatively well. Look look what's happened here in in the dollar index is breaking down badly, as most of you know, and uh, one of the 
the things that we were watching is you see the 78% level in the Japanese yen right down there at 9100. Now we're trading at 9318. You know, that's a, you know, now the, once it breaks above, you know, 9450, you could look at something really crazy. So this, this yen dollar is, is starting to move. So you don't want to stand in front of it. That's, those are the ones that you like to get to, that, that actually, you know, can be in your favor and you don't have to risk very much. So, you know, trying to short the NASDAQ here is no different than that. The pattern is there. You don't have to risk very much. You see that, folks? Even though it looks like it's way up there, there's no need to be afraid of it if you've got a plan in place to say, okay, if it's right. And sometimes you're going to catch one of these things and it's going to, you know, pay big bucks. And that's, uh, you don't know which ones do and which ones don't. That's, uh, that's the whole problem. We wish we knew that, but nobody else does either. Yeah. Folks, I have no idea how the stock market got to where it is right now. I really don't. I was uh, I was very bearish at 3,400. We covered that at 2,500. Uh, I didn't go long. I, I I really wanted to, but by golly, I just couldn't pull the trigger. I'm sorry that I didn't, but you know that's uh, either ifs, ands, or buts. I tried a couple of shorts that worked really good, and then turned around and didn't work very good. So uh, that's all I'm doing. I'm waiting for that that final. That final thrust. This might be today. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be today or not. But you know, we. The, you're right. It's the Fed juice. It has to be that. You know, Shane has been screaming about that for months, and he's been right. You know, so you can't uh, you can't knock something that's hey when he, when it stops working, we'll throw some vegetables at him. But by golly, he's stuck with it. And you know what he said was just a couple of days ago. He's standing aside. And open interest is uh, we had a big increase in open interest in uh, the uh, S and P on uh, on but on Monday. But uh, yesterday, I have not even been able to uh, check yet because, uh, frankly, I was. Uh, a little overtired yesterday, and I overslept today. Believe me, believe it or not, folks, I slept almost seven hours straight through. I, I couldn't believe that I did it. I was almost in a panic mode when I got up. So anyway, let's take a quick look here at the uh, Treasury bonds because it has a, a very similar pattern that we have in the uh, – Get this up here and take a look at it. And we alerted you to this fact that we were hitting the 78% level there. You also, you see, we were right at that 78% level within six pips. And we've rallied up now. This is a three-day rally. And you'll notice, folks, we are setting right at the magical level of 175. Folks, if these bonds cannot get above 175 today or tomorrow, they're in big Big trouble. And they've got to close sharply above it, you know, like 175.15 or something like that, because 175 is going to be a really, really interesting spot uh, for the short bonds. Now, there's a lot of still a lot of talk about negative interest rates, and I think it's total baloney. I don't believe we'll see negative interest rates here in our country. It doesn't make any sense. But if it does, you know, what are you going to do? You can't do one thing or another. Let's take a quick look at what these markets are doing pre market just to see what's going on here and uh, what do we've got here well we got the Nasdaq trading at 10,032 the S&P's at 3209 it was not able to, to make new highs so we've had a big divergence you know between the S&P and the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq the Nasdaq has been the big daddy rabbit that's the one that runs it up so when that one turns a lot of times you know it'll pull the rest of it down so we'll have to wait and see the S&P and the Dow and the Dow could not get a Above their 61% retracements of the last range. And the NASDAQ made a 1.618 expansion of that range. So there is a divergence going on there. That's the that's the key to uh, what we're watching. Uh, the gold market, I would like to if it gets down to 1766, or excuse me, 1660, I will have my bucket out there and buy a bucket worth of gold if it gets down to that level. Right now we're trading it at uh, 1731. And uh, we should be topping here in gold in a little bit after the opening around 9.45. Take a look at that because it's going to be an interesting uh, spot to uh, take a, a possible short sale. Uh, the other one that uh, looks interesting, folks, <coughs> hold on one second, <coughs> is the uh, natural gas. Let me get this natural gas contract. I don't mean natural gas. I mean copper. Hold on one second here. This is one that Mr. Z pointed out to us here the other day when we were down here, uh, when the market was making the major lows. I'll get this up here so we can take a look at it. That was back there in March. 
<coughs> March. Wow. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. We've now completed the ABCD. We're approaching the 78% level. That's up about another six cents at around 271 in the copper. We're having a really strong day today. It's up about six cents with, with the rest of the market because the world has finally figured out that there is nothing wrong in the world. This uh, coronavirus was what's a good thing. It got rid of a bunch of old people, especially in New York. And uh, whether it's going to spread the rest of the world, uh, I don't know. But when you see the World Health Organization come out with statements that they're totally contradictory, you have to wonder who's running the store in there because, you know, they're supposed to be the leader of this stuff and they're not leading very much at all. So let's uh, remind ourselves that uh, even though we think we know something, we might not. We've got a break coming up here very shortly and we will have Stan Harley on who has some really good indications of what the market is doing. He's been a market timer leader up there in the top 10 for year after year. So we'll see what happens. And uh, that's what we'll do. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed Developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archive subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and we have Stan Harley on the line of the Harley Stock Market Letter. Stan, how are you doing, my friend? Good morning, Larry. I'm doing just awesome. 
Good. Stan, I posted a chart earlier this morning that you gave us the last time you were on that really long-term uh, chart of the Dow going back to the revolution all the way to where we are right now. Do you want to give us an update of, of uh, what you're looking at, my friend? Because, frankly, uh, when, when that market went above 3,000 in the S&P, I said, oh, my goodness. I said, I never thought it could do this. But look what the NASDAQ. Can you believe the NASDAQ stand is at 10,000? That's twice what it was in 2000 when we broke 85 percent i mean that's amazing it, it is indeed yeah. uh, go ahead yeah, i saw friend. that chart that you posted about 15 minutes ago yeah from our from our last discussion yes uh, yes I, I i think that uh, 2020 is going to mark yet another uh, in the uh, the series of what i call uh, bubble peaks and indeed i've i've looked at the, the data going back to the 1600s all the way back even to the dutch tulip mania and I find if wow. I plant a, a big stake in the ground in the year 1784, which uh, was the birth of the USA uh, when we concluded our war with Britain and uh, we became a new country. But if we look both left and right from that year 1784 and use the major Fibonacci numbers, they line up with every single bubble market peak there has been. The Dutch tulip mania was about 144 years prior to that date. The South Sea bubble was 68 years, which is two times 34. Uh, the 1835 high was 55 years from that date. You know, talking plus or minus here. Uh, the 1929 peak was 145, i.e. 144 Fibonacci years from that date. And the 2020 peak, which is developing right now, and it's not done, uh, but it will be uh, the magic number 233 from 1784. And when I plug all these, uh, and one could say, well, that is not exactly 234, it's, uh, or not exactly 233, it's actually 236, yes. But when one does a what's called a regression modeling, plug in all the dates, find the least squares best fit to the data, that, that's the mathematical best fit, it works out to be 233.000, um, which is what one would expect. So we're, we're there from the grand perspective. Now, let's uh, see if we can whittle that down a little bit more closely. Are you able to call up that uh, seven-year cycle that I sent you uh, about an hour and a half ago on your uh, screen? I, I, I will be. Could we, could we do the monthly chart here on the uh, S&P, and then I'll pull the other one up and uh, get it up here for us. How's that? Okay. That would be okay, awesome. And then, okay, and I'll get the other okay. one. Go ahead, Stan. Come, please. And, and the next one, of course, is the monthly chart. Uh, that goes back about 40 some odd years, and we'll see that on the screen here momentarily. <laughs> yeah. But what I found, uh, Larry, is the dominant highs and lows in the stock market for the last 50 plus years have occurred at roughly seven year intervals. And sometimes we've had some four year cycle bottoms, but those have been, uh, those are actually 0.618 of that seven year series. Uh, but, but as a general statement, the major highs and lows tend to come at seven years or to be a little bit more precise when I plug in the monthly data, it's, it's actually 82.2 months. Um, and uh, the, the last low in that series occurred in Feb of 2016. And if you add seven years, 82 months to that date, well, you come to the end of 2022, beginning of 2023. And there you can see this, the, the chart on the screen, the triangles at the bottom. Uh, mark the uh, regression series best fit to the data. Every 82 months, plus or minus, like clockwork, we tend to see significant lows. And the next one is due, uh, as I said, end of 2022, beginning of 2023. I think it actually comes in December of uh, 2022. But before you get to bottom, you got to make a high. And, yes, uh, boy, that's, that's for sure. I, we're making we're making something up here. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can pinpoint the high. Let's go to the next chart uh, that I sent you, please. The unemployment data. Okay. So let me get this up here. We'll take a quick look at it. And There's that's something number. Uh, that you and I have talked about in the past. But I want to see if I can be a little bit a little bit more succinct uh, with that unemployment. Uh, for folks who may not be aware, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the U.S. government division, has tracked unemployment in this country all the way back to 1948. And that data is available on the, uh, on the BLS website. It's for free. You can download it in Excel format and uh, tweak it and massage it. That's what I have done. And uh, I have plotted the data. Here we go. Uh, and going back all the way to 1948, I invert the data. 
So it looks more like a stock chart. That is to say, when unemployment is decreasing, uh, the dots are going up. And when the data is increasing, i.e. the economy is getting worse, uh, the dots are going down. Mm-hmm. And then I've uh, labeled the highs and lows across the, the tops and bottoms. Um, across the bottom, there's a very well-defined cycle that averages about 129 months in the data. And then across the top, and this is what gets very interesting, Larry, look at the dates across the top. top. And let's just look at the last two or three. March of 2007. When did the stock market peak? October of 07. So what's that, five months later? Uh, yeah. Seven months later? April of 2000. When did the stock market peak? Well, the New York composite topped out in, uh, in September of that year, uh, and so on. So as a general rule, unemployment reaches its best level for the, the then current cycle about five to seven months before the stock market tops out. Or put another way, the stock market tops out about five to seven months after unemployment reaches its best level. Mm-hmm. In the current cycle, unemployment reached its best level, i.e. got its lowest, got to the lowest point, 3.5, in February of 2020. So if this pattern that I've identified continues, that would suggest the stock market should top out about five to seven months later. So you take February and you add five to seven months. That suggests July to September 2020 Mm -hmm. for the next peak in this cycle. And here it is, June. So we're getting close. And I Says actually we, think it comes in about a month. I think it comes in July. We have a question from one of our listeners uh, about this, you know, aberration that we had when this COVID virus hit. You know, the unemployment went down to, what, 50, this, uh, around 15 percent or something like that. Uh, it, you know, is this when you look at data like this, and I know you're really good at looking at data. Do you look at this as an aberration? Excuse me. <clears throat> or do you, do you just wait to see no. if it's true? Or- no, I do not. No, I don't think the... Uh, the COVID-19 thing had anything to do uh, with this. Uh, I, I'm not marginalizing the tragedy, both uh, in, in human terms as well as financial terms. But no, that just happened to be the news headline of the day. Uh, every time we get to a major cyclical high in the economy, uh, the, the, the news headline is different. What it was going to be this time around, gosh, I had no idea. It could have been the price of tea in China. In this case, it happened to be COVID-19. But uh, one can see... On the intermediate chart, we tend to make highs and lows at every seven years, every 82 months, uh, plus or minus. And then uh, the long-term chart going back to the 1600s also suggests uh, a major pinnacle high in the 2020 time period. So, uh, no, no, I don't think the virus had anything to do with this. It was going to happen regardless. Okay, Stan, we have to pay a few bills. Could you stay with us for another segment? Absolutely. be my pleasure. Great. We'll be right back, folks. Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter. We'll be right back. market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2% with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. 
Direction Leverage ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. Stan, we have a question for one of our listeners, and that is uh, they're impressed with all the data that you have. And uh, their question is, have you ever seen anything like what's going on today? That's their question. Uh, I don't know if you can answer that or not, but... That's what they're saying. <laughs> uh, well, how do I answer that? Uh, the the technical patterns are very very similar. The cyclical functions are very very similar. Uh, the news headlines are always different. Uh, but um, no, I guess this is very this is both similar and different would be the best way to answer that. Um, topping functions, though. Uh, are often a little bit different, but there's some similarities here, and maybe I should go into that. I track what I call the big five indices. Uh, for me, the big five are the Dow Jones Industrials, the Dow Jones Transports, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ Composite, and the New York Composite. And uh, while bottoms tend to be spike events or price shocks, uh, one and done, sometimes a retest, uh, Topping evolutions tend to be protracted affairs that last for, oh, let's say five to seven months. Frequently, the Dow transports are either the first or the last to top out among the big five. Uh, in 2007, 2008 time period, they were the last to top out, while the Dow and the S&P topped in October of 07. The transports topped out uh, the following June in 08. Uh, but in the current environment, uh, the Dow transports topped out in September of 2018. I don't think they will go to a new high. I think they are done. Uh, the New York composite thus far has topped out in January. I'm skeptical it will go to a new high. But uh, regardless, I'm going to be watching those five components. And as we get into the month of July, I think you'll see fewer and fewer among those five components make new highs. The NAS, of course, is already at new highs. Uh, I suspect the S&P will go to a, an all-time high, whether the Dow will or will not. Uh, my guess is it probably will. Uh, but my point is this. We're going to see a thinning in the advance across several months, and that's how tops are made until this thing finally runs out of juice. And uh, and I think it happens next month. That's what I'm uh, watching very, very, very closely right now. And then, and then uh, I think, uh, unfortunately, I think we're going to go into a pretty significant decline. And uh, if that seven-year pattern uh, continues true to form as it has in the past, we should uh, head down for about two and a half years. Wow, that's going to be interesting. Well, Stan, we're going to have you on again shortly. Uh, in, 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 well, this here we are, the, almost the first week of uh, June, second week of June is almost done. So right around the first of July, we'll be having you back on if that's okay. Terrific. I look forward to it. Thank you for being with us today, buddy. I really appreciate it. Stay safe up there. Are they, are they opening uh, 
uh, Scottsdale and Phoenix now? Or are you able to get out and uh, move around? It's uh, it's a, it's a process, just like everywhere all over the country. <laughs> yeah, it's the same way down here in Tucson. I need a haircut uh, badly. <laughs> oh, I well, way overdue. Yeah. Well, when you get to be my age, Dan, you don't have to worry about the hair. So that's a good thing to look forward to in the future. <laughs> oh, Stan, one other question: the bonds. What's yes, your uh, what's your outlook on the bond market? Um, I heard you talking about bonds earlier. I share your view. I'm not optimistic for the intermediate term. I think bonds are vulnerable to the downside. Okay, that's great. Well, that's the last question we have, so uh, have a good weekend, and we'll talk to you in early July. How's that? Terrific. I look forward to it. You bet. Stan Harley, folks, in the Harley Stock Market Letter. Let's take a quick look now. I uh, remember, folks, we were watching the uh, the Amazon. Well, let's get up here. Here's our uh, price of, of the NASDAQ. Let's get up here and take a look at it. You'll notice here that the when we were up there at that top at 1.5, we needed that to get to 1.618. Let me double check to see if we got there. Give me one second, and I will get this up here. I believe we did. Hold on just a second. And uh, there it is. Hold on just a second here, boys and girls. We'll get this up here and print it out and see what's going on here. I hope it works. There we are. The number was at uh, one uh, at ten thousand and. Uh, 58, our high has been 10,066. So that's it. Write that number down, folks. If you get above 10,066 in the NASDAQ, who knows, said the blind man. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. So just remember, above 1070, 10,000. And 70, you do not want to be short this. But right now it's trading at 10,045. Let's check to see how the old Amazon is doing. We were watching that at uh, 40. Ooh, it's at 50 already. See, it's popped through there already, folks. Let's get this up here so we can see it on the daily. You'll be able to see it. Yes. Oh, we're right there, too. Holy cow. This is going to be interesting. It's the first hour, folks. you got to watch that first hour. This is the one that uh, – let me get this chart up here. Oh, dear, we got a little slight technical problem. Just a second, and I will fix it. I, I know I, what I'm trying to do is just to show you the importance of these breakouts because when they happen, my goodness, they just go absolutely nuts. And uh, we'll get this last one up here. In fact, it's already, it looks like it's jumped. I can't get the data to update so because I don't do stocks very much. It's just that we see these. We'll, we'll learn from it. We're trading at uh, 2653. Uh, that number we were looking at, yeah, 2653. We were looking at that 2638 uh, or something like that. So we're way above that. But watch the first hour of trading now. If we get back below that 26. Uh, uh, 38 uh, level, that's going to be a sign that, yes, that might be it. And whatever that top is, that'll be your distance that you don't have to risk. In other words, if it gets, if you go down below 26.38, you sell it, and then you put your stop above whatever the high would be, which is right now at 26.53 uh, or something like that. And then so that's risking $17 on something it's selling for uh, $2,651. So that's, uh, that's a pretty easy one to pay attention to. So keep that in mind as you look at some of these things as we go through here today. But we'll learn a little bit tomorrow. Now, you know, this is a, a very interesting one here in this, uh, both of these. We'll watch them and see how we learn from it, just like we did from the Apple. And maybe if you find something that, you know, trends really strongly and you want to buy it, then watch that 1.618 because if you bust above it, it, you don't want to stand in front of it. And believe me, that number at 10,066 in the NASDAQ is very, very important. Remember, that's the Microsoft and Apple is roughly, not roughly, it's exactly 22% of that whole index. Two stocks out of the 100 to run the whole thing. That's how important those stocks are because they're, they're cap weighted. And these stocks are very, very expensive. So that's why we're watching that. Uh, the uh, euro is trading at 113 uh, in six. Uh, uh, I believe we get above 114. You're going to see a bigger move down in the U.S. dollar. But right now, it's broken down below all support in that U.S. dollar. We alerted you to that several you know weeks ago that that could possibly happen, and now it's happening. So let's. Uh, 
don't uh, get too bad. The Dow is acting badly. The S&P is acting badly. But the NASDAQ is going up. And by golly, boys and girls, you, when you're trading the NASDAQ, you're only trading, you know, basically a handful of stocks. Those are the big ones. The ones that are run the economy, runs our media system and everything else. So you just don't want to stand in front of that puppy. So keep in mind, uh, you got to do your work and you know decide how much you're going to risk on this stuff because that's what's going to determine whether you're successful or not. Not much how much money you make, it's how much money you you don't lose, and that's what you want to focus on. We got Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're back, and we're going to take a quick look at something that's very close to all of us, and that is natural gas. We've had that big sell-off, folks. You can see we pulled back right down to a 78% level like we did on the previous day. Very, very uh, harmonically, I guess you would call it. But if we took it one step farther and just did a little bit of cycle work, you would be able to see that the cycles that we have there, it's been in a beautiful 15-day cycle, and uh, that's where the, it's supposed to come 
come in today. We were down. We hit the 78% level at uh, 167, 168. We've now jumped uh, 10 handles. We're up to 179. So uh, that's started to look pretty good. Uh, whether it'll continue or not, I don't know. But if you happen to be in that one, you know, put your stop at break even so you don't have to risk very much. That's the key to what we're looking at right now. Let's take a quick look before we get back here. We've got the, uh, the NASDAQ is now backed off from that uh, 1066. We're down to 1036. The S&P has dropped another seven points to 3195. So there's a small chance that we might have a down day today. And I repeat, a small chance. The crude oil continues to work lower. We believe we've made a pretty good high in the crude oil uh, up there at that $40 and change. We're trading at 3813. That was that big three drive to a top pattern. And uh, it looks like it's going to have uh, some more to the downside as we look at this. Uh, one other factor to keep in mind is the price of the Treasury bonds, folks. If the Treasury bonds do not get above 175.20 here in the next day or so, that is going to be extremely bearish. Now, I don't know if the Fed has anything to do with it. We're trading at 175.02 now, and uh, we're looking at 175.20. If we don't get above 175.20 and then we start down, this is going to be an indication that interest rates will be going higher and not lower. But that's uh, neither here nor there. Remember, if you're trading these stock indices, you've got to trade the NASDAQ like pork bellies. It's very, very wild and very, very crazy. Trade something like the Dow Jones, the S&P, or the Russell. They're much easier on your psychic and your state of mind. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.